This closed circuit is for NBC affiliate chief engineers. The subject, a status report on the NBC satellite system, November 15th, 1985. Now, here is Don Cavell. Hi. It's been almost five months since we met at our Chief Engineers Affiliates meeting in Chicago. And a lot has been happening since then that you should know about. Today, we're going to divide this closed circuit into two parts. My status report to you, then your telephone calls to us with any questions. I'll give you the number to call in just a few minutes. Bob Butler and Dick Edmondson will join me for those. My status report to you will cover the following. Our system performance. Your power bumps and our UPS solution. The SID units and the fluke terminals. The PUPS installations, and I'll show you how one of those is put together in just a minute. Next, I want to tell you about our new satellite, RCA K2, and our preparations to move from SBS3 to RCA. Then, a little bit about our concepts of communicating with your SNG van through the RCA K2 satellite channels. And finally, I'll run a test tape for you that you can use to check out your name dropper equipment. Then, when that's all that's over with, we'll take your phone calls live until 4.45 p.m. Well, that's the agenda, and let's start right off by saying that our 1985 system performance has exceeded all of our expectations. We made full satellite, you know, just for 29 weeks without landlines. Video signal to noise is better than 58 dB overall. Our satellite network management system has given us the best football season ever. And let me show you one of our SkyPath reports for a football Sunday, October 20th. Ten transponders with uplink and downlink switching all over the system and no outages. That was unheard of a year ago. No outages on a football Sunday. Well, that makes us feel great and we're glad to be doing a better job for you this year through our satellite system. And of course, the satellite system is delivering unexpected flex flexibility for A news, press conferences, promotion feeds, creative services, sports, and a new mountain time zone delay that will be added next year. The number of system trouble reports is going way down. They are a quarter now of the number that would be re being reported to SkyPath two or three months ago. Let me show you the last three months of SNMS trouble reports and switching problems, for example. Here's August, September, and October. And the total hours of all affiliate SNMS problems, system-wide, on all services, 1R, 1E, 2R, and 2E. See how it's come down. Next, down Lake Rain. Your reports have helped us identify a dozen or so affiliates that will need special attention and possibly a site diversity solution before next May. ComSat has been given the problem and has a team in the field right now visiting many of the stations. We'll get their report next month. Finally, power bumps of all kinds affecting your local equipment. Less hours of loss here were probably caused by fewer wind and lightning storms in your area to affect local power. But that brings us to the next item, your power hits and our UPS solution. Power hits cause the volatile memory in the various computer control devices to produce outages as long as 90 seconds. A short duration hit rather than producing a slight glitch can cause an extended program outage while the computer checks, reloads, and rechecks each of the equipment memories. NBC will supply a UPS for each affiliate. It comes in two units, the UPS unit with a bypass unit on top to remember to remove the equipment from the circuit in case of a UPS failure. These units will be shipped to each affiliate beginning in December and will be installed by Harris in the top of your middle rack in the blank space you see right here. Harris may ask you to help lift the units up to this space, but from then on, Harris will connect and maintain the UPS. The UPS is there to protect you from power hits and 90 second restarts and lockups where you had to reset the whole system manually. All UPS should be installed by February 1st. Next, SIDs will be plugged in and the fluke terminals will work by the first week in February. The SID units need a further software download and Harris is field checking all of the fluke terminals for proper cables and retrofits. They have 94 working so far 
and all of them will work the 1st of February. Then you will have the automatic or manual service protection you need on 1R1E and you will be able to move your frame sync. Your Fluke keyboard will be activated later in 1986. Now our next, next subject, PUPS. Here we are at the Harris Satellite Plant in Melbourne, Florida, where the PUP, the Portable Uplink Package, was developed by Comsat and Harris for NBC News to use at affiliate receive-only sites to change them into transmit locations on either a short-term or a long-term basis. We ask Harris to go through the setup procedure that 50 of you will be seeing at your station next year. Here the Harris technician, Al Annis, unloads the first of four boxes. Here it's on a kind of a roller on cart. But if you have a roof mount, it's going to be taken right up to the top of your roof on a cherry picker. Each container weighs about 100 pounds, and all four containers must be finally brought over to the base of the primary antenna. A roof mount is a two-man job. Here we see the two black thermodyne units on the left and the other two carrying cases on the right. The units on the right contain the cables and waveguides and tools to do the job. Those brackets will also be mounted on the king post of the antenna that you saw right there. Now, here goes the exciter unit up to the top of that king post, lifted up on pulleys. That pulley, incidentally, is one way so that if Al lets go of the rope, the unit won't drop an inch. Now he's pushing it right into the bracket. And here goes the HPA up the side of the king post to its mounting bracket. There it's up there into the bracket, and Al will go up and lock it in place. Now here he's got all the cables laid out in order to connect the units together, removing the bottom panel on the exciter unit and going over to the HPA unit to remove that bottom panel. And there's the fan. That's the cooling fan which runs constantly and allows the H to be, HPA to be on at all times. The 160 watt TWT inside is hermetically sealed and temperature controlled by means of a heat pump and microscopic vents that allow a small amount of air to circulate around the TWT chamber. The PUP comes from a rugged military design and background at Harris. NBC is investigating even more portable uses of the PUPs attached to smaller antennas. Al now connects the various audio, video, and SNMS cables that 105 of our pre-wired affiliate sites have running between the antenna and their master control jack field. Remember that the PUPs are part of the satellite network management system and are turned on and off remotely by SkyPath control. Now here Al goes up to the antenna hub where the connection of the HPA waveguide into the transmitting waveguide of the primary antenna is done while the station is on the air. 
because the receiving equipment in the antenna hub is never disturbed by a PUPS installation. The whole job has taken around four hours and concludes with Al using a telephone line already pre-wired to the pad to contact SkyPath and ask for a test. Hello, SkyPath. Ready for a systems check. Thank you, Harris, for a good product and a good demonstration. The first pup will go to KXAS Fort Worth in December. Then others go to San Francisco, Phoenix, Seattle, and five to nine more each month throughout 1986. We're excited, and we know you will be too. As you know, NBC News has announced plans for an affiliate news exchange called Skycom, where affiliates will be able to transmit to each other as well as to NBC News. Now, the RCA K2 satellite. It's scheduled to be launched by the space shuttle on November 26. K2 goes to 81 degrees west longitude and has 16 transponders, eight vertical and eight horizontal down. 47 watts each. NBC has eight of the horizontal down transponders, six firm and two on option. We will also retain an always available occasional transponder on SBS 3 and the weekend transponders for sports on SBS 1, 2, 3, and 4. The following things will need to be done before K2 becomes operational in January. NBC will download new software so that your receivers will be able to tune to the new transponders on K2. Harris will visit each affiliate to load in exact azimuth, elevation, and polarization information for K2. Now, since K2 is a cross-pole satellite, the polarization of your antenna is most critical so that you receive the full horizontal signal from the satellite and none of any vertical signals. Incidentally, antenna movement must become a reality in order to move you from SBS 3 at 95 degrees to K2 at 81 early next year. The K2 satellite should also give us a better distribution of power to service everybody better. Now, let me tell you a word about communicating with an SNG truck you may own now or may be thinking about owning in the future. We are developing a broad-based communication system that will give you interrupted feedback, plus one to five telephone calls using single channel per carriers on some of the transponders we will use on K2. We already have eight meter ground stations in New York and Burbank, plus higher power transponders on K2. So, with the addition of standard telephone equipment at both the master stations and in your SNG truck, using the truck's antenna, We'll have an NBC communication system that will have performance and will be able to expand when you need communications and data out there in the field. We'll have more information for you in about nine weeks. Incidentally, if you're considering an SNG truck, you might want to think about these items too. Leave room inside your truck racks and some extra power on your generator for these communications facilities. Make sure you can uplink to full transponders on 6.2 and 6.8 audio as well. And to half transponders with 5.4 and 5.7 audio. Consider using the same kind of fuel for the truck and the generators. Consider redundant HPA units and an antenna that rotates over a wide circle. You know, it's easier to rotate, rotate the antenna than to repark the truck and a microwave mask for both receive and transmit in case your cameras are far away or the SNG truck becomes an ENG van too. In conclusion now, I want to play a one minute tape that will provide you with a check for your own name dropper equipment. It will be a minute of three multi-burst segment test signals with four Q ins and four Q outs of the name dropper. It's happening right now Here's one coming up. Here's the multi-burst test signal. Name dropper is in, out. Here's test signal number three. 
in, out. Here's test signal number four, and the name dropper because is, your Thanksgiving dinner is such a special dinner, in, Safeway wants to help you make it a big success with out. special low prices like these. Another fifth one, tender and juicy medallion multi burst, turkey, only 59 cents a pound. And in, a special value on eight ounce Mrs. Wright's refrigerated out. Crescent rolls. Buy one, get one free. And the last Save one, on fresh, crisp celery for stuffing or snacking, only 25 cents a star. In, honest deals for a very special meal. Out from America's favorite food store. Well, safe. Work. That's a status report for me, and now we'd like to hear from you. Please call us on 212 315 5140 until 445 New York time and we'll all answer your questions from over here. Uh, courtesy of David Letterman, we're here with Dick Edmondson, director of our satellite network management system, and Bob Butler, direct, uh, chief engineer of the satellite project for NBC. We may or may not have any phone calls just yet, and until we get one, I thought it would be a good idea to ask a little more about why we use multi-burst on the uh, name dropper tape. Uh, Bob, maybe you could explain that to the people on the field here. Um, Don, the uh, name dropper trigger signal is located uh, at 1.8 megahertz approximately, and uh, I chose multi-burst to be the background for the name dropper tape uh, simply because if you were checking your system to find out if there were any failures in it, you could look at the multi-burst pattern and if it was flat and certainly gave a good performance at one megahertz and two megahertz, there should be no problem with recovering the trigger signal. So it's an easy way for a chief engineer to uh, test out his own hardware. So when he plays that tape back locally, it'll trigger his name dropper right there. That's correct. Okay. Uh, he doesn't need audio on or off. Audio makes no difference in the name I, dropper, does it? It depends, of course, where the local station has introduced the name dropper. I would think the kind of test that he would uh, choose to make is one that's off hours because it might be in his STL, and certainly you can't run a test like this on the STL until after hours. But many chief engineers have requested us to provide them a means for local checking. Uh, we hope this will be satisfactory and do the job for you. I've seen a lot of name droppers appear on the, the titles and it's, it's very effective, it really is. It's a, it's a great device and thank you for inventing it. <laughs> uh, Dick, maybe you can uh, give us a word or two about the, uh, uh, the software that needs to be loaded downloaded to make the uh, the SIDs uh, 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 behave as they should. Uh, that's going to be done shortly. Well, the basic uh, change in this software is that the present software, when we set up to provide for our network service a uh, protected, dedicated protected service, the, the SID, if it were turned on, is enabled to automatically take uh, corrective action if it detects a loss of sync and transpose the video and audio path to the 1R uh, port to an emergency path. We've since learned in, in operational experience that the uh, uh, loss of sync during such things as A news is, is a normal operational characteristic and the SID isn't able to distinguish between some of our uh, operations where we will have a periodic loss of sync and where it really is a catastrophe and requires emergency action. Okay. So we've decided to introduce new software that will disable the SID and prevent it from taking uh, arbitrary emergency action on its own and allow that type of emergency action to be taken by uh, op the local operator operating the, the front of the fluke screen as we demonstrated at the Chief Engineers meeting. Okay. We have a Paul coming in from Paul Gross in Birmingham. Paul, are you there? Yes, sir. Can you ask us a question? Well, I dare you to I, ask us a question. Uh, I think Bob Butler will be interested in this. in this. I am one of the squeaky wheels, as he called it, who complained about power interruptions. We in Birmingham, as you know, are pretty much in the tornado alley. And Bob, you'll be happy to know that since we put it in, 
We don't have to wait 90 seconds for them to come back up. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Okay, that's all I have for you. Thanks for your call. All right. All right. Our, uh, our chief engineer at Peoria will, will hopefully say the same thing because he's been called out of bed, I think, twice to, uh, to drive back to the station and reset the thing. So, uh, I mean, this is going to be a boon. Ed Roos in West Palm Beach. Ed, are you there? Yes, I am. Good. Well, good to hear from you. Uh, my question is the uh, NQ on the name dropper. Uh, there are three or four instances that where it stays on, and uh, we're unable to. It, it stays on for about three seconds into our local commercial. Um, I, I'll handle that. Okay, Don. Yeah, please. <coughs> Hi, Ed. Uh, How are you doing? Um, when the name dropper tapes are made, uh, the there are two different cues. One is an in cue, which turns the name dropper on, and one is an out cue. Now, the tape, if made properly, would have these two cues within the body of the uh, promotional material. Two things have happened in the past that we think we've found. One, that for whatever the reason, the promotional is cut short. And if it is, the NQ does not come in, and if that's the case, the name dropper is equipped with a timeout. However, the timeout is an arbitrary one and might slop over into the next uh, commercial event. A second thing that's happened is we believe at sometimes in the past, instead of putting in uh, the proper NQ, uh, by mistake maybe, uh, a second NQ got put in. If that were to happen, then, of course, the name dropper would stay up for two periods. Now, we've instituted two steps here in New York to try to check into this. One, of course, is to provide you with the, the one-minute tape that we have so that you can make local checks and assure yourself you're working all right. The second thing, of course, is that uh, we're monitoring uh, name dropper operations in SkyPath presently. We're logging them accurately, and we'll try to detect any system faults that may have occurred. Hope that ho helps you, Ed. Yes, it does. Uh, one thing I will say is it's a marvelous invention, and we are thrilled to death with it, number one. Uh, number two, Bob, I'd like to also mention that the UPS unit on the Harris system is working great. And thank you very much for that one. Thank you, Ed. Ed has an 11-meter antenna. I, ho I hope your island hasn't sunk any because of the weight of that thing, Ed. No, it hasn't. Fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, we have Bob Abla, Oklahoma City. Bob? Yeah, Don. Got a question for Bob Butler and one also for you. Bob, first of all, with our inter uninterruptible power, uh, we as the other gentlemen are down here in Tornado Alley. We've had quite a bit of trouble with power outages and power bumps. Put in two power feeds from our local power company, and that has always helped. When do you think the, they will be arriving on location? Uh, glad to talk to you, Bob. Uh, our plan is to have all equipments delivered to the affiliates during the month of uh, December and January and to be fully operational in all affiliated stations by February 1. Uh, realize, of course, that uh, the uh, UPS unit is not an emergency power system. We can't keep your station on the air for an extended period of time. It's meant primarily to cover the loss of uh, volatile memory. Uh, I hope that answers your question. From America's favorite food store, Safeway. Uh, well, I assume Bob got that. We may have some problems on the circuit um, until we get another call. Bob, you there? Uh, I think he left. Uh, it was a landline. A landline. Call. It was a landline. Right. Okay. Uh, while we're waiting for another call, and a lot of these calls are, are, are great, some of these comments from the chief engineers about the, uh, the uh, UPS really working. How about sibilance, Bob? We've had a lot of questions and problems about sibilance. Uh, what kind of a fix is there in for sibilance? Um, in the specifications for the satellite system, uh, we used as the base document uh, RS-250B, uh, the EIA recommended standard. Uh, 
And in that standard uh, preemphasis is used on the audio channels uh, to improve the delivered audio signal to noise. Now, as any of the chief engineers who have FM stations or have been in the broadcast business and tried to cope with the modern day audio uh, hype, preemphasis was predicated on the fact that the audio energy distribution would be uh, roll off uh, 6 dB per octave from about 2 kilohertz up. It turns out that what the general manager wants and what the public wants today is audio with uh, very good presence, uh, where articulation is very evident. What we found out was that this produced energy distribution, which was flat well up into the 12 kilohertz region. When that kind of audio approached our exciters, it ran smack dab into distortion. This would usually happen on S's or C's, thus its relationship to the sibilant sound. Uh, what we've done in New York and in Burbank, not totally complete yet, but in our primary paths, we have introduced uh, a piece of equipment which, which looks at the audio energy distribution, anticipates the preemphasis it will run into, and reduces those levels at the high frequency end, which would cause the distortion. Uh, this has been in, in effect in, on the main feeds out of New York since uh, mid-September or end of September, and has been installed in Burbank. We have more work to do, but uh, the main feeds are already corrected. We got a call from Lynn Kurth in Portland, Oregon. Lynn? Yeah. You're there. You bet, Don. Two questions. Uh, on the portable uplink, uh, it didn't look to me like it was very environmentally protected. We get a little rain out here. And secondly, we were uh, uh, wired in power-wise as a receive only. What uh, power requirements would the portable uplink have? Bob? Huh? <laughs> uh, we took... Uh, the environmental conditions, uh, we researched them quite thoroughly. Uh, the, they, the packages sit directly underneath the prime antenna. And as Don mentioned, the HPA is a military type of operation. It's totally sealed, and the cable connections are at the bottom. There are no openings at the top, and we take the, both the top and the bottom cover off. From America's favorite uh, store, the Exciter, uh, we cover both ends of the case after the wires are connected. Um, we believe that we won't have any difficulty in temperature. The temperature range that it has been checked to is something like minus 40 degrees C to plus 60 degrees C. We have operated the unit in heavy rain, and we don't see that that'll be a problem. Now, yes, you were wired for a receive only. But one of our specifications to Harris was that, in fact, the PUPS unit could use the existing power. And uh, what, you, what you will find when you get an installation is that AC outlets will be exited from the antenna control box and fed to the exciter and HPA. Thank you very much. Uh, one, okay, fine. Uh, well, 60 degrees C is 140 degrees Fahrenheit, I, my thing tells me. That's, that's, quite, a, that's quite a range. Well, it gets pretty hot in Florida. All right. <laughs> Let me just tell you a few of the upcoming uh, installations that are going to take place and uh, some of the dates that uh, we have talked uh, with uh, Comsat and Harris about getting these done. Uh, we will be installing a Temple, Texas uh, and uh, Columbia, Missouri before the end of the year. Uh, finishing up Atlanta, the TR will be working. And then we pick up uh, uh, Champaign, Illinois on... Uh, uh, about the uh, end of January, uh, Joplin, uh, beginning of February, Yuma on uh, the uh, middle of February, uh, Eureka uh, toward the end of February if uh, their, uh, are their uh, building permits to get approved, which is always a, a problem in new construction. And uh, uh, Boise, we're going to pick up as soon as things thaw uh, in that part of the country in time for the mountain time zone playback, obviously. Okay, uh, 
Another question that was asked earlier on in the, in the system, uh, Bob, and that is uh, about audio delay with the various frame syncs in the picture. I remember it was either Lynn uh, Kurth or uh, uh, one of the folks up in the Northwest there had a question about, geez, he, it looks like he's out of sync by the time it plays to the West Coast, and uh, he finally gets it. Uh, could you talk a little bit about our audio delay fixes? <clears throat> Happy to, Don. Um, the way in which the signals are routed uh, from New York or from Burbank or from any uplink, as a matter of fact, to your station, uh, the audio and video are fed in sync presently. And when they arrive at your station, if the video has passed through the frame synchronizer, it is possible for the video to be delayed relative to the audio by up to one television frame. That's 34 milliseconds, approximately. Uh, the RS-250B document that we used as the basis for specifications of the system allows because the audio to be slightly to earlier than the Same video, but a considerable a amount later than the video. The actual specification is the audio can lead by 25 milliseconds and it can lag by 40 milliseconds. Clearly, if the frame synchronizer is in the video path, then the audio will actually be earlier than the specification allows. It'll be 34 milliseconds early. But of course, in the Earth Station, sometimes you use the frame synchronizer and sometimes you don't use the frame synchronizer. So we had to have a solution that satisfied both conditions. Our elected choice there was to put audio delay in the output of our signals as they approach the exciters in the Harris uh, transmit system. And what we intend to do is to put in, in all of the major transmit ports of the system, an audio delay so that the video and audio have a pre uh, situation which would make the audio late as it was being transmitted so that when the frame synchronizer was introduced the combination of the delays in audio and video would fall within the specification and the subjective result would be a totally lip sync picture and sound. I'm going to take another call at this point from Mr. Pexton at Topeka. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. I have the name dropper installed here and have an intermittent with it in keeping it genlocked. Uh, it'll occasionally lose genlock and about the time we get the covers off it to start tracking it down, it either resets itself or when we reset power, uh, it regains genlock. But when it loses genlock, it doesn't bypass anything. Have you experienced anything with that? Um, when it loses genlock, it should automatically bypass, not allow any in-trigger. My suggestion, uh, at the end of this closed circuit, uh, if I can have your phone number, or let's see, KSNT, right? Right. Uh, Richard, uh, I'll have the manufacturer call you Monday. How's that? That's fine. Because I do believe you must have an equipment problem. Okay, thanks. Okay, we got a return fall call from Bob Abla, Oklahoma City. Bob, another question? Now I see why we went to satellite rather than relying on phone lines. <laughs> okay, we lost you there. <laughs> okay, I'm back now. Okay, Don, more. got a question for you on the fluke terminal. Both of our SIDs have been turned on. We have been have we super periodically over our incoming video with our station call and the local time. We've noticed that when we are not in the dedicated protected mode, as indicated by the fluke terminal, our we're not genlocked. We seem to crawl. Our, our logo or our super moves, we have to actually go to the dedicated protected mode. Should it not be in this mode all the time? I think that's for you, Dick, right? Well, we would, on your 1R feed, it would normally be expected that you would be fed in a dedicated protected mode, and the fluke would be indicating what you've been programmed to receive. Uh, the business of crawling, though, I would think ties in with the, the functioning of the frame sync, not the fluke. Well, I, uh, but Bob indicated uh, that his SID-1 is presently turned on. Well, we've noticed in scanning the, the, uh, resu the uh, status returns of, an, of the stations that there are a number of stations that have SID-1s turned on. Uh, and I was going to mention that at this meeting, that until we get the final resolution of the SID, it oh. might be wise right. to, to keep the SID unplugged. 
Sid one should still be off until we get everything put together. That's the oh, message. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Okay, so leave Sid one off. Yeah. And then that should solve our problem. Yeah, you've been patient well, so far. Just a couple of more weeks, and we'll, <laughs> we'll get this thing under control. Okay, Harris has been telling us to turn them on. We'll turn it back off and give him another shot. Thank Good. you. That's great. That's good. Sorry for the misinformation. No but why would that have to do it? Because it goes to one e. Okay. Um, uh, I'll tell you, we have a, a friend of ours here, Charles Jablonski, who is uh, lurking behind the wings here. Charlie, could you come up here and, and, and join us for a second? There's been a question. Uh, Charlie's with our staff engineering department, if you can uh, frame him. Great. Uh, many TV stations have called in and said, hey, you're going to go stereo, and I'm all for it, and I want to convert my RCA transmitter, but RCA may not be making that stuff much longer. What's the, uh, what's the answer to the question like that? Oh, very good question. RCA is committed to fill the orders they presently have confirmed. There are other companies that have agreed to make transmitter conversion kits, one in Pennsylvania called ITS, and they have G-line conversion kits available for that G and F line that they will be making. And RCA is negotiating to have the transmitter business sold to another company, and it's hoped someone will pick that up in the near future. If you have any questions about stereo conversions, give us a call on the engineering hotline, whose number is 664 2430, and we'll try to steer you in the right direction. All right. That day, and, and just the time the, the R number comes up on the screen. Would we'll you just tell them that number again? It's area code 212 664 2430. That's the stereo hotline. That is correct. Okay, fine. How many stations have we got now on stereo? Slightly over 40. Great. 42, 43. Great. In the top 25 major markets, as I understand. That is correct. Okay. Um, Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate that, uh, the answer to a question that a lot of people have, have been asking. Uh, another question came up, and as long as we have a few more minutes, let's uh, get into this too, about scrambling. What's NBC doing on scrambling? And uh, uh, with the K-band system, are we going to zip right into something in a scrambled fashion? Uh, Bob, can you? Um, <clears throat> scrambling, of course, may be the desire of our affiliates and our management. Uh, to preserve uh, the content of program uh, from outside users. The system that you have in place right now uh, was well thought out and it took a while and it, there were some basic decisions made right up front about how we would proceed into the area of scrambling and other techniques. And we had to make those decisions with the clear understanding our goal was to get on the air and uh, provide the service prior to the divestiture of the telephone company. We made those decisions and one of them was that we would build uh, an NTSC compatible system. Now many of the scrambling devices that are already on the market used by cable systems and used by other networks in fact, uh, scramble the signal well enough and maybe even provide extra facilities but one thing that always shows up in them is they're not compatible with a standard NTSC transmission. To fully equip our system so that every affiliate could receive a scrambled signal of that sort we'd have to go back and retrofit every single earth station. Our intent and goal is to provide scrambling in a compatible way so that that will not be the case. Uh, Mike Sherlock brought this question up only last week, how soon, and uh, I told him the answer, and he said, well, that might not be soon enough, but it was <laughs> in the neighborhood of a year. <laughs> That'd be pretty fast. I mean, on outgoing feeds or incoming news feeds, or how many feeds are we talking about? We have options in that area, but of course, if we scramble our outgoing our programmings, our delivery, then every single affiliate must be equipped with the wherewithal to descramble, and of course, he must be equipped to do it in a redundant fashion so that we maintain the integrity of the system. And that process could start in a year. And, and that's where the second frame sync comes in? That's where additional equipment does come in because there will be additional hardware required at the affiliate end of the system. Okay. Um. Skip Aldrich. Skip, are you there? You bet. Skip? Perhaps uh, I missed part of this, and then maybe this question was asked, but 
uh, when will the net alert function of the name dropper be installed? Uh, good question. Uh, the, it, when the name dropper was built, Skip, uh, the manufacturer and others asked that other codes be put in the name dropper besides just the key to turn it on and turn it off. And a net alert uh, code was introduced. However, in, in the wisdom of our lawyers and everyone else in talking to the FCC, about the allowance of this transmission because it is an ancillary signal and it does get radiated even though invisible. The FCC in their response to us were very specific on their allowance of our use of the hidden trigger. They said specifically that we could use it for this function, name dropper function, station identification, and that they asked us that if we were to use it for another purpose, that we reapply for approval on that. So the answer to your question is, our, we felt that getting the name drop in operation was the first course of action in the FCC. Let us do that. When successful, and I think it is now, we could reapply to the FCC and indicate that we might use it for a net alert function. Do you have a timetable for making that application? We haven't made it as yet, Skip. It's a good question and a good jog because uh, uh, this came up, oh boy, about six, eight months ago, and we said at the beginning of the name dropper uh, 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 equipment uh, 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 description that yes, by golly, net alert could be a function of that. Then we hit the FCC, and many other things have taken our time, but it's a good time to get back into it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Bob Lancaster, Palm Springs. Uh, Mr. Cavell or Mr. Butler, uh, what time frame are we looking at here at, at KMIR in Palm Springs uh, for the PUPS installations? And all, are all stations going to have the PUPS? Oh, let me consult my PUPS list. Uh, this changes, uh, Bob, uh, from <laughs> from day to day and, and maybe hour to hour, depending on the news's uh, decisions of the of the time. And a uh, uh, Palm Springs at this point in time is not on the is not on the first initial pups go around, but uh, you might talk to uh, uh, a news department about that. Uh, maybe have your news director uh, uh, get on with the news here in New York, Art Kent or whatever, and uh, talk further about uh, uh, Palm Springs. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Okay, we have three minutes to go, and if uh, maybe we could swing one of these cameras around uh, to the art uh, uh, card we have. Let me just show you what the transponder schedule would look like uh, when we go to the RCA K2 satellite with uh, probably <coughs> more satellite channels in operation, obviously, than we have uh, right now. Let's take a look at the one on the left. Uh, I have two two uh, um, cards there, and. The one on the left would give us a, a, an, a, an example of, of up there we go. With up at the top, left or right, we have uh, the, uh, the six full-time channels that we've ordered on RCA, and the one over the left, the occasional channel. So you can see, we won't be operating, since they're all 47 watts, we're going to be kind of available to use any transponder of the six, not just transponder six and nine, which under SBS, uh, 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 in the SBS satellite, were the high power transponders. We can put network programming, as you can see, the A, B, the D, which is the West Coast, and the C, which is the new mountain time zone delay, on any of the transponders and switch them around without having any problem about power or distribution or uh, DBs or those kind of things. So that we'll be a lot more active in our uh, transponder mix-up, if you might call it that, in switching around than we were in the past because we were confined to transponder 6 and 9 if we wanted the high power benefits of the, uh, of the satellite. So we're appreciative very much for your call in, for your attention, for your, uh, your putting in these 170, we're at 168 ground stations right now at Affiliates, and the ones to come that I just mentioned, and the dates uh, before the end of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, this year and early next year, you should see the construction going on at WXIA in Atlanta, this huge elevated parking lot with the uh, transmit shelter buried in floor number two, and. Uh, the eight meter sitting on top of the top level uh, near where the helicopter lands. So we thank you and we'll be having another one pretty soon. We, we, let's not let five months go by again before we get together. And that's it for today.